ancient Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. Well, it's dusty. Mm -hmm. All the buildings are the same color. They're made from the earth. Yes. It's uh, busy. There's commerce going on here. Mm -hmm. There's uh, people of many walks of life. In and, the streets, yeah. And as you're on that street, do you feel that you have a body there? Yes. Is it male or female? Male. Mm -hmm. Describe yourself. What do you look like? An average height. Um, darker skin. Um, uh, a little bit better than most of the people. Mm -hmm. Financially, I'm a little bit better off. Yes. I have a business. What kind of business do you have? Uh, huh. See yourself going to that business now. Well, I have a a business in the market. Mm -hmm. I have uh, many women working for me. Yes. And they're basket weavers. Oh. And we have uh, beautiful baskets for sale in the market. You sound very proud of what you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it a while, and it's very profitable. And it helps the women also. They can't get jobs otherwise, so I give them some of the profits. Mm -hmm to help their families. So yes, I'm very proud of it. So what do you call yourself? What is your name? Jehoshaphat. Je so Jehoshaphat. 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 Very good. And how old are you? I am 42 years old. Very good. So Je Jehoshaphat, I'm going to ask you now, as I count from one to three, to go to the place in which you call your home. Okay. One, two, and three. Where do you live? Uh, about walking distance from the market, yes. but removed enough where it's safe from the inner city. Mm -hmm. I have a wife and five children. Yes. We have a home that's large enough to accommodate us all, so we feel very blessed. Mm -hmm. Um. We pay steep taxes because of it, though. Mm-hmm. And um, my wife is beautiful in my eyes. She's given me five healthy children. They're all very good. Mm-hmm. And they like to, even the smallest one likes to make little trinkets to sell at my tent in the market. So they all help you with your business? Yes, they love it. Mm -hmm. They're part of it. They love it. They love the hustle and bustle. When they're small, I don't take them to the market, but I will take them one at a time. Each has a turn. And if they want to make little things that they can sell and make some money, they can do that. That's wonderful. You sound very proud of your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look into their eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Have you seen those eyes before? Do you recognize any of them? Hmm. The smallest one I know this in this life, I've known in this life. Mm -hmm. Very good. Just, just take a moment and connect with that soul now. Huh. Very good. I've known this soul. Uh, I worked. Uh, I worked in a country club in Birmingham, and there was a little girl that just would giggle and run to me and hug me every time I came to work. Mm -hmm. And she was my youngest in that life. Wonderful. She was my little, my baby, my sweetie. Very good. Very good. So let's close this scene now. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you're going to go to a moment in that same lifetime, Jehoshaphat, in which something very important happens, something that impacts your life. One, two, and three. Hmm. What's happening? This man came to town that was 
notorious. He came through town, and there was something very special about this man. And it made me want to hear more information about him. Mm -hmm. I became very curious about this man. What was it that he was so notorious about? His stories. He told stories about God. Mm -hmm. And they were very thought-provoking. And everyone was talking about them. They were all um, discussing what these stories meant and how they could apply it to their life. It seemed very uh, interesting, just very interesting and enlightening. Yes. So where does that take curiosity take you? Um, for the rest of my life, I, I wondered about this man. Mm-hmm. How, how has it impacted your life? Well, every story, I'd go home and repeat it to my family. Mm -hmm. And we'd have discussions about it. And I think it made us a better family. It made us stronger. And uh, it made my children sweeter. Yes. Did you ever know his name? Jesus. It was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Were you able to get to meet him personally or just hear his no, stories? No. I saw him. There was such a crowd around him. He was going through town. He was... Uh, on a donkey. He was going through town on a donkey. Mm -hmm. And um, people were just clamoring to get close to him. And um, I was in the market, so I went to a higher spot so I could get a glimpse of him. Mm -hmm. There was just something about this man. He was so magnetic. Uh, it was just a feeling that you got just being around him, just being... Tell, just, me, tell me about that feeling that you felt from him. It was a... Uh, there was an energy coming off of him, like... Like magnetism. Mm-hmm. Yes. It just drew you in. There was something very magnetic about this man. Yes. It was very mysterious and compelling. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close this scene, and I'm going to count to three. When I get to number three, you'll advance to the next important moment in that lifetime. One, two, and three. Where are you? I took my family and we moved from, we moved out of Jerusalem. We were very happy there. I don't mm -hmm. know. We moved. There was a reason we moved. All right. There was some kind of religious persecution or something. We had to move. All right. So let's go back to that moment that made you move. What it was it that it was impacting you? I'll count backwards. When I get to number one. You'll be in that moment when something caused you to move. Three, two, and one. What's happening? Um, Roman soldiers were really cracking down on people that believed this man's stories, that were uh, repeating his stories. And there were followers of this man that were uh, giving us even more stories. And they became like enemy number one to the Roman soldiers. And uh, one of my neighbors put a couple of these guys up and they got tortured for it. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was just very dangerous to be there with all of this going on, especially after I'd told my children, and you can't trust children to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. So we went to my wife's family's house and decided to start over there. Yes. The word Bethesda, Bethesda comes out of mm -hmm. 
But anyway, we went to where my wife was raised with her family, and it was a better place to live, and, and we continued with our basket business anyway. We found other women that would weave baskets for us, and we did the same thing in their market, and we were a lot safer and happier there for the rest of our days. Very good. So I'd like for you now to fo go forward to the last day of that lifetime. Mm-hmm. And let me know what's happening. I'm, uh... Oh, it seems like I, uh... I ate something that wasn't good to eat. It wasn't quite poison, but it... Mm -hmm. wasn't good for you, and I was so old that it just did me in. Mm -hmm. Notice what it is that you're eating. I was some kind of fruit. Mm -hmm. It was, uh... Huh. I don't know what that is. It's a... It's a dark fruit. Mm -hmm. um, looks like about the size of a peach or something. Okay. But it was... Certain people just couldn't eat it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. um, some people just... Nobody really wanted to eat it because it just was not a good food. For some reason, I ate it. So what's happening to your body as you're digesting this? There's been a lot of uh, pain and breakouts of some kind, mm -hmm. and um, that was it. I mean, I had all kinds of breakouts on me, like uh, blistery mm -hmm. things. It, it wasn't good. So who's with you as you're dying? My whole family's there. Mm -hmm. They were so sorry. Yes. They were blaming themselves. That it, oh, it seems like there was some dementia. That's why I ate it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty old. I didn't know better. I just picked it up and ate it. So what's the last thought that you have before you leave that body? I'm looking forward. I'm looking into the light. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm seeing that man, Jesus. All right. Tell me what happens as you leave that body behind. He said he, he knew I was watching him in the crowd. Mm -hmm. He's telling me how much he loves me, even though he doesn't know me at all. How does that make you feel, knowing that he knows you? I knew there was something very important about this man, and this is my confirmation. Mm -hmm. I was very sorry when I heard that they killed him. And I felt very guilty, like maybe we all should have banded together and protected him somehow, but we couldn't have done that against the Roman army. Mm -hmm. What does he say when he knows that now? He says, all is forgiven, it's okay. Mm -hmm. He's uh, just here to tell me that he loves me and that I was a good man. And what was the reason you needed to live that life? What did you learn from it? I learned that when parents hear good things, that will give their children a beautiful way to grow, that it's good that they pass that down. Mm -hmm. Pass down the good stories. Yes. Because it will continue. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'd like for your soul to just continue into the light. Mm. Where do you go to next after leaving that body behind? Hmm. I'm heading towards the light, and I know that we're all one. We all come from that light. Mm -hmm. So as you're going towards the light, are you able to experience anything around you at the same time? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on all around mm -hmm. me. There's a, there is a whole bunch of relatives that I know that have gone to the light. Mm -hmm. There's... Um, People that weren't relatives, but I cared about them. And the relatives, there's relatives I never knew, but mm -hmm. they're greeting me. I mean, they're generations ahead of me. Do you recognize them even though you've never met them? Does your soul know who they are? Oh, well, some of them we've been through multiple lifetimes together. Mm -hmm. We're old buddies. Mm -hmm. And um, some I know who they are, but I've never met them in this lifetime. Okay. Continue into the light. What happens next? 
there's a I am showing my life mm -hmm. and I know what things I shouldn't have done and I feel deep regret for it and then I feel a loving presence around me like a big beautiful hug mm -hmm. who is that that's hugging that's you? that's God and I know that um, I know things. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I know mysteries. Yes. I know all, all mysteries. I know the things I was interested in were just the tip of an iceberg of some information. Mm -hmm. So I know all that information, and that's why my interests were piqued about these certain things. Mm -hmm. And in this place, where you feel that you know everything. I want you to understand that there is no time. Mm -mm. Notice if you could see into different lifetimes. Yes. Yes. I have seen past lives, the one that I just came from. Yes. And future possibilities. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to look into the future possibility of a woman named Sabrina. Mm -hmm. This has been preordained for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Sabrina is comprised of multiple warriors through multiple lifetimes. She's comprised of many men and few women. She takes her mission seriously. She's a devout warrior. Mm -hmm. She has a very tender heart for the innocent. And she's a protector of such. Mm -hmm. And in that lifetime that you see as Sabrina, what is the mission that she is preordained to do? <sighs> Sabrina is a sign and a wonder a walking miracle. Sabrina survives, survives, survives. Sabrina will help people understand what survival is, what faith is, and how prayer works. She is a walking example of all of the above. Mm -hmm. So as a warrior, she's also a teacher? A teacher by example? By example, yes. Mm -hmm. So has she chosen that mission or was it chosen for her? There was much discussion about this mission. Mm -hmm. She actually almost quit the mission early on. All right. So take a moment now and just go to that moment in which the planning is taking place for this soul to do this mission. Yes, there are multiple people around the table. Mm -hmm. How many are there? Mm. Fifteen, give or take. Mm -hmm. Some move in and out of the conversation. Okay. But the conversation was intense. There were many aspects that um, had to be addressed along with diversionary tactics um, when possible timelines might have happened. Mm -hmm. And she agreed that this mission was worth it. It was very important. Why is it important for her to do this mission at that point in her life? Well, because it's that point in time on Earth she, along with many others, signed up to be on Earth at a specific time under specific circumstances, whereas the Earth is going through a major point in the timeline where 
things are changing, changing a lot of changing rapidly. On on Earth, the physical Earth? On Earth, Earth? with people, okay. the cosmos, mm -hmm. of, of like a, a redirect, reset, paradigm shift. Yeah. Sabrina's part is important in this shift because there is a dark to light aspect happening at this time and her job is to bring as many people as she can to the light. Mm -hmm. This is very important in the shift. It will make a difference in very big, big ways. And why is it that she has had to endure near-death accidents? What does that have to do with the mission? It's all part of the program. It was conditioning as a mother goes through birthing pains. Mm -hmm. They do not have all the birthing pains at once. Sabrina had to go through multiple birthing pains mm -hmm. to get to the point where she can accomplish her mission okay. with surety. And how does one know when the mission has been accomplished? They'll know. Everyone will know. Okay. All right, I'd like you to move forward now to the moment in which Sabrina has gotten the latest challenge in her life. Yes. What was the catalyst to cause all of this disruption in her body? Resentment. Mm -hmm. Lack of forgiveness. The constant loop of negative thoughts. Fear. Mm -hmm. I faith faith wasn't as strong as it should be. Okay. So why did she need to experience this? To bring her back. Okay. To forgiveness, love, trust in God, prayer, faith. Her perception and the kindness of Jesus coming through her and looking with those eyes at everything that is happening around her. Mm -hmm. Yes. So scan her physical body right mm. now and notice how it's doing. Mm. There's things shaking up in Sabrina's body. Shaking mm -hmm. up. What's causing all the shaking? Uh, there's a metamorphosis going on. Mm -hmm. There's a rebirth. Okay. Where is this taking place? Well, first it was in the colon. Brand yeah. new. Brand new now. Mm -hmm. Next, where they look next, the uterus, ovaries, reproduction. Reproduction is cleaning its act up, too. Mm -hmm. Then there's the liver. The oil is going to help and so will the tea and the seeds. She will be diligent. Mm -hmm. And the prayers, healing and love coming her way is so exponential. It's it's saving her. Mm -hmm. It's saving the people that are praying. It's saving the world. It's saving. This is God's grace happening. And she will be able to testify about that. Mm -hmm. Once all of these prayers work, and she comes out the other side and befuddles all the doctors. Mm -hmm. It's happening now. Mm -hmm. It's happening now. So all of these prayers that are coming from all over the world. Yes. From so many different belief systems. Yes. Notice how they're affecting her. Oh, they're affecting her. Mm -hmm. She feels some, but not all. Okay. 
the cleaner her system gets, she'll start feeling more and more and more of them. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important that she's monitoring and she's fighting to monitor yes. against certain opinions. Mm -hmm. What goes in her body? Because the cleaner her system is, the more she prays, the more she tunes in, the more she'll feel the healing, even though she doesn't have to feel the healing for the healing to happen. Mm -hmm. The prayers are healing her. Well wishes, love is healing her. Yes. So while she is receiving all of this, she's also praying for others. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how is it that when someone prays for another, how does that affect them? That prayer, it's not cellular, it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. It comes from the mind, which is not in the body, mm -hmm. the soul, which is not in the body, spirit, love, all of these wondrous, mysterious, nebulous things that we work with have a vibration that they can emanate. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing, and every human being can do it. It's a beautiful vibration that they send out with love, and it goes through time and space and goes to God, Source, Creator. God, Source, Creator takes this love emanation and amplifies it purifies it and thus sends it back through time and space where everything between that source and the person that prayed is touched by that purified love emanation. And then when it comes back, it comes back to the person in an instant that prayed that prayer, that thought that good thought. It heals them on a cellular level. It expands their mind and soul, which are separate at the cellular level. And then the condition or the person that they're praying for. All of this beautiful activity that emanated from that energy is shot at this person that they're praying for. Mm -hmm. And it changes them even more on a cellular, a mind, a soul level. It, it's, uh, and then they are emanating through time and space. Mm -hmm. It's an energy that can light up the earth. There are some there are some entities yes. from angels to alien that actually can tune into this situation. And the more of it that happens, they know that it's like they represent God. It's got to be angels. Mm -hmm. They see, they can actually see this happening. It's prismatic, it's beautiful colors. They see it happening and it's, mm -hmm. it happens in a flash. And the more of it that happens, they, they celebrate because mm -hmm. they know that it is lighting up the world and saving us, saving us all, saving us all. Yeah. Not even the people on earth, but all through the cosmos. It's saving us all that humans can do this. Mm -hmm. 
not everyone can. We're made to do this. We have forgotten our way. And humankind has to remember that this is the best thing we can do, the best. It'll save us all. There is a darkness creeping. It is an opposing factor. It is not of God. And it's out to get us. Mm -hmm. And by using this beautiful, intense, magical power, we can form a grid of light that can reduce the darkness and keep us spinning in the sky. So let's take a moment now and understand that there is no time. Everything happens in the moment of now. Yes. And as this is happening in the moment of now, those who are watching and listening to what's happening in the moment of now, yes. let's begin to amplify our own light and send a prayer to the soul of Sabrina. Hmm. Send it into her body, amplifying our own light bigger and bigger. Hmm. And as it goes to Sabrina and through our powerful divine source, feel it coming back into their own bodies, hmm. into their own soul. And as we triangulate this light, begin to see in our own mind's eye the grid beginning to lighten up. Beginning to see our lights, our collective lights, beginning to shine brighter mm. than the dark shadows. Those that are working so hard against the light. But knowing that we have God, Source, our creator, our divinity. Feel the spark within us brighten. Mm. As we cover Sabrina with this light, reminding her etheric body of its perfection, Feel every molecule in the body begin to react. Begin to see the metamorphosis mm. of every cell, every organ, every fiber. Expand the light even more. Knowing that with our prayer, being that we are all one, we send our prayers to all of those who are also inflicted with their own illnesses. Expand your light, your collective lights to all of them. Hmm. And by doing so, it comes back even stronger, illuminating you. Is there anything that you would like to tell Sabrina today about what's happening in the near future with her, what she'll be doing with this experience? Uh, yeah, she'll be speaking in front of crowds mm -hmm. and teaching them about forgiveness and prayer mm -hmm. and um, holding the light and um, being present but healing, 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 forgiveness, prayer. Mm -hmm. That's the motto right now. So she'll be at a podium. She'll be traveling and speaking to people. 
She'll be thanking them for their prayers and telling them how that works. Mm -hmm. And praying with large crowds of people. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Good. So I'd like for you to go ahead and do one more scan of Sabrina from the head to all the way to the toe. <sighs> and I'd like to call in that energy from directly from source, like a beautiful divine MRI machine. What are your findings? Well, there's activity. Mm -hmm. There's mutations. They're all being um, addressed. Okay. I'd like for you to tune into the attitude of the cells. How are they feeling? The healthy cells are working overtime. Mm -hmm. They're feeling the love and that Sabrina has given to them. Yes. The mutations are also accepting the love that Sabrina has given to them. And they are in divine timing of doing the transmutation into God's light. Okay, good. They are doing a divine timing dance. Mm -hmm. So, as we saw in the perfectly healthy colon, there, it's all like a divine hand and how they're doing it. So they're listening to the symphony that they, that they need to play. Mm -hmm. It's being performed according to the love and prayers that she's receiving. So there was focus on this one area, ta-da, beautiful mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. Focus on the next area, same thing. So, the prayers, the healing, and the love are working. Good. And as you scan through this body, I'd like for you to see if there's any uh, residual effect from the love medicine that she took. No, actually. Very good. The love medicine did some shrinking. Mm -hmm. It woke up the healthy cells to quit being so lazy. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're really good. But it, um, it shrank something. Mm -hmm. And um, it healed something. And the rest of it was moving out through her. Okay. Uh, she, um, any residual effects are being transmuted just like the other stuff. Okay. It's all the same category. All right. So are the cells aware that she is taking some tea, some, some other things? For, yes, for the cells them? like that. Okay. They're thanking her for that. Okay. They, they like the tea, the seeds, and they're loving the oil. Okay, good. The liver is really liking that. It feels good about it. So is there anything in particular that the liver wants as she applies the oil? There's a iron. She needs more iron. Okay. Um, there's certain um, juices that have iron in them. Uh, what is it? Um, prune. Prune juice. Okay. She needs to um, do that. More prune juice. Yeah, and other, other things that have iron in it. Okay. She's, she needs that. And... Um, she definitely needs more vitamin C and B12 especially. Okay. So with her hand, I'd like for you to point exactly where it is that she needs that oil applied. Right through here. Okay. She can put it everywhere, but she needs that pack right on the liver. Okay. Yes. Good. So have you completed the scan of the whole body? Yes. Actually, things that weren't relative to what she's going through now are being healed also. Good. Um, she will notice more um, flexibility mm. and um, 
other things, just uh, things that have been bothered her have just not bothered her anymore. Okay, good. And her back? Her back is healing up too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Back, uh, knees. Yes. Uh, the neck, all the bones, the bones all needed it. Mm-hmm. They're getting, uh, they're getting what they need. Good. So go ahead and complete that scan. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Sabrina? Or anyone else who's listening? Oh, she's very popular. Mm-hmm. She's being watched by many. Mm-hmm. Heaven and Earth. Yes. She needs to stay on her best behavior. Okay. And the people that are watching can glean um, the positive information that they listen to, the prayers that Sabrina has bounced back. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody watching will be touched and healed some. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. So, yay. Very good. So with that, I'd like for you to go ahead and shine a beautiful light on her. Hmm. A very high frequency. Oh, oh wow. Well. Does this frequency have a color? Same purple. Mm, beautiful. So just tone up that frequency mm. much higher now. See, every cell vibrates with it. Just feel it going through your body. And as you're feeling this frequency, you begin to now notice that you're coming back into your body. You begin to sense your body once again. Feel yourself coming into it as you would in the morning when you wake up. Mm. And as I count from one to five, you'll come back with complete control of your mind and your body now knowing that this body is healing completely. Five, wide awake, completely alert, feeling wonderful all oh. over. Oh yeah, thanks for that. That was, uh, that was all over the place. It was, but I'm buzzing. Are you buzzing? God, I was getting rushes like crazy. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. Huh? Yes, just when you think, oh, it's all going to be boring from here on out. Interesting. <laughs> here you, comes this stuff. You remember going to Jerusalem? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was interesting. I got goosebumps from that, too. I don't know. I see. This is how ignorant I am of the Bible and stuff. Well, maybe it's a good thing. I don't know if Palm Sunday was in Jerusalem or not. That's where you were. But it seems like... You saw him on a donkey coming in? Yeah, it's... And I don't want to be wrong, so here goes the ego, but... I, I don't know where he was when it was Palm Sunday, but it felt like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like throngs were coming after him, and it was... And, and it would touch this man. He didn't even have to get close to him. He was like watching the parade from the back, and he was like, this guy, this guy. But it was very magnetic, almost like a moth to a flame. You just didn't even know him. Wow. And you wanted to be, he was very charismatic. I mean, just like in a surreal way. A rock star. It was like, you know, spiritual he was, he was rock famous, star. but we did not like we know famous today. No, it's different. But I mean, he had a, a magnetic. He had a persona that you just yeah. wanted to be close to him. It wasn't like any rock star I've No, I'm saying a rock but, star in his, in his yeah, time. Yeah, but it was a, yeah. you know, That's why such he was a thought-provoking, so wise yeah. man. Yeah. But then again, he was doing all these healings and things, right. and you heard about that, like, this guy's, like, bringing people back to life and stuff. Yeah. So you wanted to get a glimpse. You know, you knew he must. it must be him, because nobody else was that famous unless they were some kind of, you know, royalty or something. 
Yeah. But you knew it had. You just knew it was him. And you know, people were being. I'm sure people were yelling his name and stuff too. I mean, because I'm seeing it without sound. Mm -hmm. You know, but there was a commotion going on, and. Uh, and the way he had to move quickly because. That yeah, yeah. Uh, that must have been after the crucifixion. Yeah. With a, uh, the. Uh, all people the were coming after all the, the followers. Were mm -hmm. getting in trouble and stuff, and people were getting in trouble for putting them up and stuff. Because, like, we were real established. We loved our home, been there forever, raised five kids there. The kids were getting older and everything, and, and uh, we had to drop off the planet there for. We had to get out of town. I don't know where. Uh, I heard Bethesda, but isn't that in Maryland? Is there a place? In, <laughs> well, I don't know. I hear the stuff, it's like, oh, just say it. <laughs> Who knows? It wasn't Bethesda, Maryland, no, that's for no, sure. No, no, but they, yeah. there was the, the wife uh, had a big family. Could look it up. Yeah, we yeah. had to look stuff up. Always You're a researcher. Homework. Yep, Good. I was doing my homework. But, um, yeah, that was interesting. You don't think about somebody that just heard of him and yeah. saw him and passed the stories that he heard down to his kids, and the kids got better because of it. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's yeah, you know. All but, right, well, everybody... Thank you for watching. Um, another adventure. <laughs> another adventure. And, and today uh, we wanted to give you some news since the last time you saw a video with Sabrina. So Sabrina, tell, tell everybody what happened since the last time that mm. we had a, a session. We met on January 2nd. 2nd or 3rd. Second you third. went in on the 3rd. Yeah, I had the biopsy on the 3rd. Okay, yeah. so the last video was January 2nd, and that's, I was here, and uh, Sabrina went in for a biopsy. The third. The third. Okay, so tell them what happened. About the biopsy, or the, what do you want to... What the results were. Okay, well, um, they were telling me that I had uh, stage 4 colon cancer, and uh, the biopsy of the liver didn't look good, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, so they, my oncologist is a very brilliant woman, and, um, she said that we were going to have to get very aggressive and that we were going to do like a bunch of chemo every two and a half weeks for three months, okay? Yeah. And um, so I was like, well, I'm just going to take the medicine and I'm going to meditate all the way through it and um, mm -hmm. say, you know, go to the right spots and stuff like that. And uh, it was rough, okay? I'm not going to say it was easy. Yeah. And the next day I was... <sighs> going, ugh, this, this ain't right, and um, mm -hmm. anyway, so, uh, and then it was, you know, days of all kinds of trouble and, and shots in the stomach and all this stuff, it was, now I know what people go through, let's put it that way. Well, so then they had a colonoscopy done, and that was last Friday. Yeah, last Friday, they went in and they wanted to check they wanted to, to see check. what the mass was. Yeah, and well, colonoscopy comes up absolutely the prettiest colon you've ever seen in your life. I've got 55 pictures. I was like, well. Yeah. So that was a super game changer because now my oncologist is like, wait a minute. So we canceled the uh, super chemo I was going through. Thank you, Jesus. I, I let out a woo woo. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, and crying because that would have been yesterday. And here on my birthday, I would have been going through that horrible day after, which was no fun at all. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, please, Jesus, don't make me go through that on my birthday. I was, I, that's the only time I got a little whiny. I was like, mm -hmm, you know. And so here I am with Alba. We went and did a pretty lunch, you know, and and did this session, which was interesting. And um, I've had so many happy birthday things. We did a little live thing and all these happy birthdays. Yeah. And I just, I was like, this is a happy birthday. This is my rebirth day because I am being yeah. reborn here. Yeah. I feel like I am... Um, like a butterfly or something. I'm going through some kind of metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. My body is changing so rapidly. Yeah. And uh, for that to be healed, now they're going, well, it's uh, most probably your ovaries. Now we're looking at the, you know, the all, all the uterus and all that crap. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so they did a, uh, they, they fast-tracked me. I'm telling you, the VA at Medical City, the VA Medical Center here in uh, Orlando, they are state-of-the-art, bada-bang. My oncologist sends me right downstairs. There's 78, 70, 80 people sitting, waiting to get imaging done, and they put me right in for yeah. a sonogram. So I had a, a, a uterine sonogram. Then they said they saw 
some kind of mask there on an ovary. And I was like, is it the same one that was on my colon? Because the uh, <laughs> sneaky little bastard is getting around. <laughs> and they're like, don't you worry about that, Sabrina. You know, you just hang in there. I said, watch me. I am hanging in there, you yeah. know. And they're like, uh, we're just going to put the puzzle pieces together, okay? So I've got uh, next Friday, uh, I think that's the 26th or something, it's around there. I get a PET scan, which sounds like another wonderful procedure, but they'll be able to see exactly what the hell's going on in there. Cause like, what's going mm -hmm. on? Y'all are sitting there saying I got one thing and then another thing. So meanwhile, I was told by multiple people that had firsthand accounts readily available that I should be doing this SEAC T, which is a Canadian tribes answer to medicine or something. And it's supposed to just tear up some cancer and used along with Latril, which is B17, which is bitter apricot seeds. So that is starting this evening. I had to prepare the tea and it's quite the process. It's got to steep for 12 hours. This is a badass tea. So I'll be doing that until my um, PET scan a couple days before it because I'll have to prep for it. I don't want to mix modalities, but I'm doing that. and. Alba has been pushing castor oil till I went down the rabbit hole on YouTube. And then <laughs> this uh, wonderful super nurse friend of mine, Tanya, she's telling me, yeah, you just keep that on 24-7. Mm -hmm. So I got me some uh, super castor oil, and I did that last night. I'm not doing it today, but I will be doing it tonight. And uh, keeping that wrap on with castor oil, too. That's supposed to detox your liver, amongst other things. Yeah. So when I go in and get that PET scan, I want to see some difference. And I want them to be scratching their heads just like they are about the colon. Yeah. I believe it's a miracle happening. I believe that all of you people all praying. All of you. Yeah. All of you people praying. I get I'm ch chills She's all over feeling the it. She's I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the healing. So all of those, all of you who are doing the, the energy work, who are healers from all over the world. She's asked for it. She's given ah, permission. You've got and it. She's Bring it. feeling it. She's yes. actually and, and I've the been prayers and I I'm, yeah. I'm just soaking it all in. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking all that love and I'm putting it towards whatever is mm -hmm. happening that doesn't need to be happening in my body and telling it, look, I get I'm getting real military because I've been going to this military hospital. I'm like, okay, mission accomplished. Good job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> here's some love. You know, this is your payoff. You can transmute into God's love and light and you can just go back where you came from because mission accomplished. You are now dismissed. You know, I mean, I'm doing that kind of thing. So, uh, but uh, your prayers are working. If you'd mm -hmm. please continue that. Yeah for a little bit, I'd, I'd super appreciate it because yeah. I'm so blown away by all the love. I just keep getting all, I start turning into a crybaby every time I think about it because it's so overwhelming. Yeah. So one day, I will be inviting you to a, a big gathering <laughs> and you'll be able to meet Sabrina yourself and she'll tell her story and she'll get to hug you and Wouldn't get to meet cool? you. That yeah. is so cool. Please, so put God. that put that in your mind. Put that in your reality of uh, a very near future, uh, having us in a big hall with a lot of people, and you'll she'll be telling her story, and you'll get to meet her. Yes. So, and we'll talk a lot about healing and yeah. prayer and forgiveness. Forgiveness has been a theme, like y'all wouldn't believe. Oh my God, I'm in a whole other universe. People that wronged me, and I was Coming working back. real hard. That they are coming out of the woodwork asking mm -hmm. for forgiveness not even knowing they don't even know I'm yeah. going through that I mean people that I was praying for their soul they're just a completely different person it's like and, and there's a divine like a it's like a dance going through everything yeah. I've learned to just be still and know it's going to be okay I'm not in control God's in control I've completely surrendered and I'm like well, if that's not working, it's not supposed to work right now, mm -hmm. if that's not happening. And even though I'm doing that, you know, because people are like, oh, well, what if you don't do this? And I'm like, no what ifs. I'm not listening to that. Yeah. And, you know, I'm hearing people go, oh, well, you know, this is going to have that. I'm like, no. I'm, it's all in divine time. And yeah. It just puts you in this mind space. Yeah, so and, there's a lot going on. And I wanted to let everybody know, you know, I've been talking to Sabrina, what, like three or four years now, mm -hmm. um, almost every day. And 
we even had a GoFundMe for uh, for her because she was going through a lot of stuff. Yes. A lot of stuff, and a lot of this stuff was a lot of resentment. There was a resentment. Lot of, there was anger. Uh, yeah, a lot there of it. There was fear. A lot of it. All the bad things. All the bad stuff, and this went on for quite a few years that of was bad. this thing brewing inside of her. Yes. And we could see now for, and I'm telling you because. You may be going through stuff yourself, or you may have family members who are going through this, this anger and resentment, and I'm not going to forgive that person. I know it's hard, but, you know. And that's why I call my work the spiritual journey of forgiveness, because forgiveness is so important. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're okay with what they did. No. Okay? Forgiveness is... You stop taking that poison and re and and keep re recycling it over and over right. again and harping on the fact. It's how that you react? Yes, exactly. So if you are a person who is going through really hard times, forgive. forgive Put it. yourself on a different timeline because the moment you forgive, things are going to just change in your life. And it, it helps you exactly. You forgive them. It's saving you. Okay. Yeah. It's saving you from what I'm going through. Yes. All right. And forgiving doesn't mean, oh, I should just ignore the fact that this person did something really wrong to me. Yeah. You're like, I'm looking at this person from a divine standpoint. They were put in my path to give me this hard time for me to learn how to forgive them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How to love them anyway. How to love them in a, a one of God's children kind of way. And I mean... Mm -hmm. It's a paradigm shift. It takes a second. But once you get rolling yeah. on it, it gets easier and easier. And everything has shifted in your life. Oh, it is totally it's different. It's unbelievable. It's, it's amazing how everything has changed in her life. Completely. And so we, we want this to be an example for your own life. Yes. Forgive um, and, and your life will change. I had to go through it in my life. Mm -hmm. I know that if I didn't forgive, I would have also gotten very sick. And uh, I forgave. I saw things from a different perspective. And I know that was a healing. So that's, that's our message today. Just keep praying and forgive. And <laughs> Butters, is, Butters is running around. Running around. So thank you for watching, everyone. And um, I really appreciate your prayers. Keep sending the healing Please. energy. See her completely whole. See her, see her at the podium talking to everybody and giving everybody a big hug afterwards. See that as our future. And we will be there. Thank you so much. I love you all so much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. You're the best. Bye. Hey, give me that hook. Mm -hmm. Baby. Mm -hmm.